Good evening. The Wyzetta Public Schools Board of Education regular meeting for Monday, June 10th, 2019 will come to order and will the clerk please call the roll. Yes, Eric Brown. Here. Linda Cohen. Here. Andrea Keen. Here. Benita Lucky. Absent. Cheryl Polzine. Here. Chris McCullough. Absent. Sarah Johansson. Here. And Chase Anderson. Here. All right, thank you. So the first item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda and the consent agenda. The consent agenda items are considered to be routine in nature and will not will be enacted by one motion. There's no separate discussion of consent agenda items unless a board member or a citizen so requests. The, in which case the consent agenda items will be removed from the packet and discussed. The consent agenda items are listed in the packet board members and is there a motion to that effect? I so move. Second. All right, and no discussion, and it's a roll call vote. Yes. Eric Brown. Yes. Andrea Keene. Yes. Linda Cohen. Yes. Sarah Johansson. Yes. Benita Lucky. Absent. Cheryl Polzine. Yes. Chris McCullough. Absent. All right, thank you. We have an agenda and a full house, which is great to see. Thank you all for coming on this first full week of summer vacation. The next item on our agenda is reports from organizations, but we will not have that this evening. I think our student council representatives are off doing other things. So, we is here? You do have a student council representative here. I'm so sorry. Come on up. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, and it's our Dickerson. Would you please introduce yourself as well? Hi, my name is uh, Matt Lawrence. And uh, yeah, let's, let's get started. Um, <laughs> Welcome, Matt. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so in general school news, graduation was held on Friday, June 1st at Mariucci Arena at the U of M campus. Uh, the class of 2019 graduated with uh, 1,933 students. Uh, the rest of the class got let out last week um, when everyone else uh, went on to summer vacation. Uh, some student council news. Student Council elections for the 2019-2020 Senate were held in May, and uh, we have also hired our new Student Council advisors. Um, I was elected to be the Vice President, uh, so I will be reporting to you monthly um, to the school board meetings starting in September. Amy Swenson will be the new uh, Student Council advisor, and Lauren Wilvers will be the Assistant Advisor. Uh, planning for next year has already started, and I think it will be a great year. Um, after hosting National Student Council Conference last year, uh, we are proud to be sending five students to the 2020 National Conference in Pittsburgh. And four of the five YZ students will also be presenting how to host a Survivor Week, as our Survivor Week is something that is talked about all around uh, the country. And I know that um, plenty of other Minnesota schools have also adopted a similar event. Some fine arts news. Um, the theme for the 2019-2020 theater department will be uh, Find My Way, stories of identity, transformation, and forging your own path. The fall musical will be Legally Blonde. Uh, some prominent concerts that were attended in May, or heavily attended in May, uh, were Magic Theater, Moment in Time, the Ninth Grade Choir, the Orchestra Concerts, um, the Senior written, written and Directed One Acts, and the Wind Ensemble. The marching band is going to perform in Orlando again this fall, and the drumline for marching band has already started practice. Now on to athletics and activities news. So the synchronized swimming team has won their 13th straight championship. Uh, the boys track and field team got third place at the state meet uh, recently, and the girls track team won their section six AA uh, meet. Baseball lost to Hopkins in the section championship game, and um, boys, lacrosse, boys lacrosse is heading to the state tournament, which their first game is tomorrow. Uh, boys tennis won the AA consolation championship, and girls golf placed second at their section meet. That is all I have to say. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Thank you so much. <laughs> Board members, do we have questions? Not so much. We're so glad you came. Thank Thanks you. so much. We look forward to seeing you in September. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Perfect. And next on our agenda are the recognitions. So Dr. Anderson will make his way to the podium. Sure. 
Good evening, everybody. I'm Chase Anderson. I'm the superintendent for the school district, and it's always my privilege to convene the uh, recognition portion of our program. So it's great to be here tonight. It's a little bit warm. We'll see if my jacket stays on for the entire uh, recognition event, but uh, it's really great to have you here. And uh, Matt, wherever you may have gone, there you are. Thank you, and it's great to have you here uh, today. So thanks for the, the great report. He shared uh, with you that we have a few uh, students that will be going to the national event and uh, we hosted that here last year and we had I forget how many Sue were there 800 students that were here from across the country and uh, many adults as well so I'm glad to know that we're sending some students there I think we've had a practice of doing that and that's a wonderful event I would say probably one of my all-time favorite things uh, my time here in YZ to have all those young people come literally from across the country for this national student council convention and conference so it'll be a, a great experience for those going so moving on to our uh, recognitions uh, tonight the first recognition is uh, we always start out with our retirees and we have one to announce uh, here tonight and that person's uh, name is Debbie Zaki she's a paraprofessional at Oakwood and she's been with us for 11 years I don't know if Debbie is in attendance tonight if not I'm sure she's tuned in on live television uh, <laughs> Out there uh, enjoying the moment, so to speak. So we'll give her a round of applause. Please. <laughs> and we have very few recognitions that are uh, annual events for uh, state championships, but we have yet another one. My prediction last year when I closed uh, that session by saying uh, we'll see you next year uh, came true. And we have our synchronized swimming team here tonight. And I know one of our uh, coaches, Caroline Berg, is here. I would like to invite her forward. And uh, all of our, Caroline, congratulations. Thank you. And I'm also going to invite uh, our athletes that are here, our synchro swim athletes, to please come forward. Maybe line up uh, right along here. The fireplace is not on, you'll be glad to know, so <laughs> it won't be uh, overly warm there, but uh, congratulations. And I'll, uh, well, I guess I've already announced pretty much what I have here on my script, but uh, the girls, uh, once again, uh, were state champs for the 13th season in a row. And uh, we have, uh, as I said, one of our coaches here this evening who's going to share a little bit about the team. And I don't know if you have a designated uh, captain or somebody who may want to uh, make a few comments on behalf of the team, but I'll turn it over to you, Caroline, and thanks okay. for being here. Thank you. I'll uh, knock on wood for next year, too. So <laughs> um, I want to start by saying thank you on behalf of our head coach, Signe Hensel, and the rest of our coaching staff. Um, Thank you to Dr. Anderson and the board members for recognizing our student athletes in our program um, today. We had a really tremendous season. We're really proud of all of our swimmers. Um, this season actually had some unique challenges as the U of M Aquatic Center, where we've had our state meet since as long as I can remember, was under construction. So that not only changed our schedule, but also our location. And the girls handled every change and a little bump along the road with positivity and optimism. So that was really wonderful um, to see in our team. Um, I guess I'll just introduce everyone who's here. We have Alyssa, Arohi, Caitlin, wish me luck. <laughs> Caitlin, Anna, Ruby, Emma, Aditi, Sasha, uh, can you guys, okay, <laughs> Samantha, Gabby, Emily, Sarah, Narali, and Caitlin. Um, so, congrats. <laughs> So we ended up with 23 routines making it to state. Of that, 21 made it to the podium. And out of those, 16 um, placed with medals. So that was really a great state meet for us. Um, our long and extended divisions, we ended up taking first place in all of the routines. So solos, duets, trios, um, and teams for long and extended. And our short division did really well as well. Um, our team of student athletes also earned the gold standard with an average of a 3.84 GPA, which wow. is great. Um, <laughs> um, four of our swimmers were actually named to the 10-person All-State team. We have Narali, Caitlin, Caitlin, and Sarah. So congratulations. <laughs> 
four of our swimmers also earned a triple crown, which means that they placed first in all of their events. Um, Ruby, who's here, Olivia, um, Caitlin, and Caitlin as well. So, yeah. Um, and just as a highlight, our senior here, Caitlin, um, finished first in all of her events, as I mentioned, including placed first overall in all figures across the entire state. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. In addition to being named to the All-State team, she was also awarded the Academic All-State Award for having a GPA over 3.85 and having earned All-Conference and All-State. So congratulations. Yeah. So, thank you again for recognizing our team. And as Signe would say, um, we hope to be invited back next year. <laughs> <laughs> I think I shared this last year too, but many of us went all the way through our high school careers and never had one state championship. And here's a team that's won 13 in a row. However, I know for some of you, it's your first one. So I bet that was uh, really quite a thrill. And for those of you that have had three prior, hey, they're all great, right? Whoever gets tired of that. So congratulations. Our next recognition uh, this evening is for two Wyzetta High School juniors who earned perfect scores on the SAT college entrance exam. And I'd like to invite Brian Lynn and William Wen forward, please. So I'll just share a little bit here. And uh, are you Brian or William? I'm William. William. <laughs> Sorry, I should have known that. The maximum score on the SAT is 1,600, which requires earning a perfect 800 on both the evidence-based reading and writing and math sections of the exam. Out of the 2.1 million students of the class of 2018 who took the SAT, less than 7% of all test takers earned a score in the 1,400 to 1,600 bracket, making a perfect 1,600 even more rare. Congratulations to Brian and William for their outstanding accomplishments. Well done. He's denying uh, to share how he did this uh, at the current time. <laughs> We're going to get a photo regardless. <laughs> Next, I would like to invite Annika Aluwalia to come forward, please. There she is. Congratulations. Congratulations to Annika Aluwalia, who has been named a 2019 US Presidential Scholar. 
Annika was one of four semifinalists from Wyzetta High School, advanced as a finalist, and is now among 161 U.S. Presidential Scholars from across the nation. Students who qualify for the U.S. Presidential Scholar Competition demonstrate outstanding academic achievement, artistic excellence, leadership, citizenship, service, and contribution to school and community. Candidates also qualify for the award through outstanding performance on the College Board SAT and ACT exams and through nominations made by chief state school officers, other partner recognition organizations, or the National Young Arts Foundation Nationwide Young Arts Competition. The White House Commission on Presidential Scholars selects honored scholars annually based on their academic success, artistic excellence, essays, school evaluations, and transcripts, as well as evidence of community service, leadership, and demonstrated commitment to high ideals. Annika will be honored at a ceremony June 23rd in Washington, D.C. Congratulations. Wow. And next, we're going to be recognizing a number of uh, scholars of distinction, and I would like to invite uh, Dr. Dorothy Welch forward to uh, share a little bit about uh, the program, and Sue Iverson as well, and one and or both, whoever wishes to join me. I'll just share a little bit about our, uh, our scholars, our Minnesota Scholars of Distinction. Congratulations to 27 students from Wyzetta High School who were among the 51 students honored statewide by the Minnesota Department of Education as leadership, science, social studies, STEM scholars of distinction and meritorious award recipients. Minnesota Department of Education recognizes the distinguished achievements of students who have completed required work in the Minnesota academic standards, demonstrate mastery of complex subject matter, and apply their knowledge to the challenging projects. These students were recognized at an award ceremony on Saturday, May 18th at the Perpich Center for the Arts, Education in Golden Valley. I was able to attend that event, and it was incredible that uh, more than half of those recognized that day were from Wyzetta High School. So we're very proud of uh, your great work. And uh, at this time, we'll hear a little bit more about that. I'll turn it over to Sue and or Dr. Welch. Thank you. Many of the students that won, won this award are in our Honors Mentor Connection program. And then there are also some students who do the project through um, Northern Star and the assignment program. Um, so I will be calling up the assignment students and then Dr. Welch will be calling up the students from Honors Mentor Connection. Um, and as I call you up, why don't you come and stand up here and then we'll get a picture at the end. Okay, we'll start with um, Devika Narayan who got a Leadership Meritorious Award for her project, Healing with Harmony, a music therapy app for Alzheimer's patients. And she also won a Science Meritorious Award for understanding interactions between insulin and amyloid beta fibril formation in Alzheimer's patients year two. Um, the second student was Brian Lynn. He won the Social Studies Scholars of Distinction for his project, Fighter Aircraft as Giffen Goods. Brian, are, are we gonna call them coming? I did. He doesn't come now. We are inventing this as we go along. The Honors Mentor Connection program had a number of students honored in this, and I'd like to call Rashmita Gandhi, who was unable to be. Oh, come on, there you are, good. <laughs> Rashmita won the Social Studies Meritorious Award on a topic called Assessing Change in Economic and Psychological Well-Being from a Multifaceted Event. Avril Asthena won the Social Studies Meritorious Award for Modeling Housing Affordability and Subsidies in the United States, Analyzing the Potential Need and Impacts of Government Subsidy. He did his work at the Federal Reserve. Meredith Cleave 
won the Social Studies Meritorious Award. I don't believe she was able to attend tonight. Her project was the effects of corporate social responsibility on workforce culture. Amog Kalkarni, Social Studies Meritorious Award for the role of formative, political, and supportive social and economic factors in the historical growth of Paris. George Kai, Science Scholars of Distinction, Drug Discovery for Treating Heart Failure, Validating Compound Screening for Ryanodine Receptor 2. Emily Chu, are you here? No. She won the Science Scholars of Distinction for calibration of target word embedded in a carrier phase. And she went to several conferences and was a presenter with this project. She won the STEM Science Scholar of Distinction for the calibration of target work embedded in a carrier phrase. George Liu, I'm surprised. He was a science scholar of distinction for non-disruptive evaluation of cell viability of cell-laden hydrogels. And the STEM Meritorious Award winner for non-disruptive, that was the same one. Uh, the next winner was Sai Chanton Reddy. And he won the Science Scholar of Distinction for a novel treatment for small cell lung cancer, a project review of the full savant, and I can't say these words, combinations. <laughs> Arohi Shaw, who was one of the swimmers, won the Science Scholars of Distinction for determining expression of experimental antigens in subclones of melanoma cell lines. Sai Banjuri won the Science Meritorious Award for evaluation of critical polymer and drug concentration for making amorphous solid dispersions using electros <coughs> electrospinic te technology is the easiest word I had to do in that whole thing. <laughs> Amanda Chan was the Science Meritorious Award winner determining whether implementing a tri-block column polymer can improve the compatibility between poly something or other and low densi density polyphylene. <laughs> Sonia Gazula. She won the Science Meritorious Award for mechanisms underlining the contributions of inhibitory protein signaling to anxiety related behaviors. Abhishek Mahash is the Science Meritorious Award winner for a project called Elevated Levels of Cellular Toxic in Huntington's Disease Brains. Sai uh, Sarayu Paturi, who won the Science Meritorious Award for understanding and relating the effects of demographic and infectious parameters with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiencies. She won the si si STEM Science Meritorious Award under st for the same thing. Nirali, where are you? Okay, Nirali won the Science Meritorious Award for a genetic interaction between SAC7 and LET60, the effects on penetrance and expressivity. Iris Wong won the Science Meritorious Award for Immune Editing of Antigen Presentation Machinery in Pancreatic Cancer. Zachary Zhong. Thank you. <laughs> the Science Meritorious Award for a Detection of vi Viral hemorrhag Hemorrhagic, oh, I can't believe this, <laughs> Spiramia using enzyme-linked immuno, why did you say it? <laughs> <laughs> Annalise Wickman, Science Meritorious Award, the effects of prolonged exposure to ethanol vapor on anxiety-laden behaviors in rats. Neil Gladikar won the STEM, Solace, STEM Scholars of Distinction for the fracture behavior of copper nanowires from atom atomic simulations. Harshal Ganesha Murthy. STEM Scholars of Distinction, Intelligent Labeling System Using Mean Shift Tracking, Shreyas Chinola. STEM Meritorious Award, Collaborative Communication and Virtual Reality Using Speech and Waypoints. 
Sekith Kalapara, a STEM Meritorious Award for Improving Co Prostate Cancer Treatment, op Optimizing Targeted Drug Delivery Using Nanoparticles. Sure, you got those words. Mehul <laughs> <laughs> um, Maheshwari was the STEM Meritorious Award winner for the project called the Field of Views Association on Cyber Sickness in Virtual Reality. Anaketh Naidu, STEM Meritorious Award, Improving cancer, um, Prostate Cancer Treatment. He did the, a partner um, project with Seketh. Okay. Caroline Sasan won the STEM Meritorious Award for Synthesis, Characterization, and Antimicrobial Application of Zinc Nanocompound. Is that the last and, one? And I'd also like to um, recognize and call forward Amy Swenson and Amanda Layden. The four of us um, teach the Honors Mentor Connection class. So why don't you come up too? <laughs> Great job, you guys. I understand we also just set the record for the longest smile in history. <laughs> So our next recognition is uh, quite a unique one. In fact, I don't know that I've uh, read one at our board meeting quite like this one. And I'd like to invite Annie Jokey to please come forward. And I know she's here with quite a team here today. So anybody who uh, was part of this remarkable feat at uh, East Middle School a while back, uh, and who was uh, there on the scene and, and part of the response team, please come forward. But I'd like to share this fascinating story with you. Annie, first of all, welcome. It's great Thank to have you, you here tonight. <laughs> And I will share the following. On Friday, May 24th, Annie Jokey, special education paraprofessional at East Middle School, was helping two students near the media center when she began making a choking sound and then fell to the floor. The students immediately ran to the office for assistance. Karen Ortman, building secretary. I saw her here, but I don't see her up here. Karen, come on up. All right, here she comes. Karen was the first to respond and alert, alerted Trudy Namer, health paraprofessional, Sarah Kleinite, student services secretary, called 911. Kelly Chizuski, office para, grabbed the defibrillator and brought it to the scene. A number of other teachers and support staff jumped to action to ensure Annie was getting the attention she needed, that the students were cared for and others were kept away from witnessing the traumatic event. Trudy commanded control with a calm sense of urgency as she administered the defibrillator to Annie, who was unresponsive. Nama Johnson, a parent of an East student, assisted Trudy. Annie regained consciousness. Sarah continued to provide much needed emotional support to her. The first responders arrived moments after quickly and quickly took over and transported her to the hospital. We are pleased to have Annie here with us tonight. 
well on her way to a full recovery, which is easily observable here tonight, as we honor her and all the people that responded to give Annie the opportunity to continue making a difference in this world. So at this time, I don't quite know who of this tremendous team that's here tonight, who to turn this over to, but maybe we'll... Angie will start. Angie, all right, welcome. Good to Good see, to see you. Thanks. Sorry that my phone turned off. Um, thanks for having us all here tonight. Um, I am Angie Riki. I am Annie's favorite sister. Okay, well, I'm her only sister, but we don't have to you know, go there. Um, Annie has been a fighter since day one. And 44 years ago, she kicked us out of the womb. She was... <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry, our mom's here. <laughs> sorry, mom. Oh, we were together. We kicked out together, so that would make me your twin. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, she was taken immediately, immediately to Children's Hospital, not expected to survive. Not a surprise to her family. She ruled the neonatal ward, and after six weeks, they released her. Tonight, we want to thank Trudy the fast acting students and staff at Wazetta East Middle School, and the parent she just met tonight. Thank you. Um, thanks to all of you, my partner in crime, my best friend, and my only sibling. I have always known, I have always known the past 21 years that Wazetta West is the best, but now Paul, I truly believe that East is the beast. <laughs> uh, Annie has now informed me. She gets two birthdays now, so to celebrate. Uh, August 13th, I guess she'll still share with me. Um, but May 24th will always be a special day for all of us. So thank you so much. Thank you for having us here. Thank you. I, I raised my children in the Wyzetta School District, and you've all proven to me why we came here to begin with. And so, I, I mean, the principal, uh, Chase, the superintendent, come to the hospital, um, and Karen and Sarah, and it's just like, I mean, they really cared. So I appreciate all the support. And like I said, I raised my children in Wyzetta. They came back and stayed in Wyzetta. So uh, thank you. It's a great school, great school district, great people running. So thank you. I just want to personally thank everybody um, for saving my life. I greatly appreciate all of you guys. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so grateful that we have defibrillators and such a wonderful district that has defibrillators and that all of the nurses and health staff is trained and we know what to do and do our best. So I'm just very grateful and I'm so grateful you're here and it all worked. Yeah. <laughs> and of course we have to get a photo. So we're going to assemble up here. Is that all right? Everybody want a photo? Sure. Oh, you two should be in the front. Yeah, yeah. For sure.
just an incredible story and I uh, again want to thank uh, Trudy and all the team that responded and took such good care of Annie uh, at the time when she needed uh, that type of assistance. It's very much appreciated and it's great to have you here with us tonight, Annie. We also have uh, with us tonight Jody Remsing, our Director of Special Services, and Don Wilson, who's our Director of Health Services. So I would like to extend my thanks to you too for providing the resources and all of the support for our health services teams. and to have uh, defibrillators uh, throughout our buildings and available and uh, certainly made a difference in this case and, and has uh, in earlier years here as well. So thanks everybody for that wonderful uh, feat that you accomplished. And again, Annie, it's great to have you here. We wish you great health. Thanks. Get a little bit out of order here. All right, I think I found the right one. I think this is our final recognition for the evening. Last but certainly not least, I'd like to invite Molly Davin forward, our employee of the month. I saw Molly. And I will share this uh, on behalf of Molly, submitted by her colleagues, and then give her an opportunity to share a few comments as well. Congratulations to Molly Davin from Central Middle School for being named the June Wyzetta Public Schools Employee of the Month. Molly is truly a unique educator who teaches the academics of language arts upon a strong foundation of relationships. What makes Molly a unique educator? At the core of her personal philosophy in education is her experience in comedy, acting, and writing. The rule of say yes and improvisational acting resonates through her approach to creating positive culture and pride within Central Middle School. Molly has taught a range of courses since starting Central Middle School over a decade ago. In that time, she has primarily taught both seventh and eighth grade language arts, but more distant in the memories of many is the fact that she also taught health and family and consumer science. Her classroom is a place where students find making a mistake to be non-threatening. Unpredictability is acknowledged and accepted, and significance and belonging take precedent over content. However, it isn't only the diversity of the curriculum she has taught that makes her a great candidate for Employee of the Month. It is the subtle and not so subtle things she does to promote positive school culture at Central Middle School. She has coached basketball, which some would say was a subtle contribution based on her background in the sport. She has helped choreograph the musical. She has coached improvisational acting after school. She has been a staff advisor to student council. She has run student council teams and facilitated a number of charity drives at the school. She has organized school assemblies, made countless videos for staff and students, and has published the unofficial staff newsletter called the Peebus Proclaimer for the past several years. <laughs> Described as 70% accurate, 80% informative, and 30% relevant, the Peebus Proclaimer has the feeling of a small town newspaper. The Proclaimer provides CMS staff with updates and happenings within the school. Whether she has convinced students to hold welcoming signs at the entrance to CMS or she is sending an email on behalf of someone who asked her to make it funny or getting video of teachers lip syncing to Beyonce, Molly is motivated to help bring a smile to the faces of those around her. And she uses her unique talents to make CMS a better place for everyone. Congratulations, Molly. so hot right now. <laughs> um, thank you very much. I am so happy and excited to be here. I want to add to my list of accomplishments that I taught a lot of those children who are just up here and you're welcome because <laughs> I had nothing to do with that. Um, I I do not always feel like this accomplished educator that I have just been described to be. I sometimes 
in my classroom feel very distinctly unsuccessful. And so it's so uh, affirming to have these nice things said about me and to have this recognition. Uh, it makes me feel so good. I really love teaching. I like it when people ask me, what do I do? I get to say I'm a teacher. And then they say, what do you teach? And I say, I teach middle school. And then I like what their face always does when I say that, which is like, the eyebrows go up and they're like, oh, you are so brave. And I say, I am, you're right. And, um, but I like it. I like the challenge. I like trying to make 13 and 14 year olds uh, care about comma placements and <laughs> theme statements. Uh, it is an uphill battle. And I think the secret is you just have to find the humor. You have to find the jokes that they are there every day. And I want my students to like school. I just want them to like school. If they might not be successful on every assessment, but I want them to go to high school feeling like there is something in school for them no matter what. And if that means that I have to be like the biggest dork in the room so that they don't even have to worry that they're the biggest dork in the room, <laughs> then that's what I do. And I try to make the staff happy because happy teachers make for happy students. And so I really like to laugh at ourselves. I laugh at myself first. And then hopefully the kids learn to laugh at themselves. And then if you really build the relationships and you really earn their trust, then they let you laugh at them. <laughs> and that is really satisfying. <laughs> so I really enjoy it. And uh, so um, in closing, thank you so much. Thank you uh, to my administrators, Clark Doughton and Ashley Farrington, and not so uh, long ago, Jenny Berg. Ever since I was hired, I have felt really safe and supported, and that allows me to do my very best work every day. Um, thank you to my family uh, who are here and being kind of noisy and disruptive. <laughs> they keep me grounded in what is important. And all my teaching friends, I love going to work. Um, I don't get sad at the end of the summer. I just like it. And it's because it's funny <laughs> and it's fun. And we're just going to keep it that way. So thank you very much. Yay. Way to go, Mom. Well, I think that concludes our recognitions tonight. Anybody come tonight expecting to be recognized and then weren't? Because <laughs> now's your chance. To... All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome to stay, but it's pretty nice out there. So uh, feel free if you're so inclined to make a graceful exit. Thanks, everybody. Wonderful to have you with us tonight. so much. I credit my colleagues. Yes. Thank you. Keep going. You're going to swimming? Amazing how often I hear that. No. I'm, the meeting is still happening. Congratulations. I'm on camera and so is your back. I love you. Goodbye. Emma, stop. Emma. <laughs> Sorry. Moment of levity. <laughs> she knew when I said yeah, I'm still on camera. Oh. And she turned around and said, oh. well, isn't that bad lesser? It actually feels better already, doesn't it? That's right. Oh. All these hot I know. I
going in my stream. Thank you. All right. Probably just wait a minute, right? Everybody else is good? Um, I think probably just some, yeah. But it was a great, oops, a great response, yeah. Thank you. All right, for our viewing audience at home, thanks so much for that temporary pause. We were so blessed to have such a great community um, engagement in our meeting this evening. So. We will continue on now. It's really hard to follow recognitions with policies, but we will try, right? Um, and Dr. Johnson, I think you are on for a couple of our policies. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, there are three policies tonight for your consideration. Policy 527, student medication, 612, student travel, and 617, uh, school volunteers. Policy 527 was reviewed and changes were prepared by the school district supervisor of health services. The policy and regulations were also reviewed by the policy committee of the board. Uh, the details are listed in your board packet. Student travel policy and regulations were reviewed by teaching and learning department, the principals, the executive director of business and finance services who also shared them with our insurance carrier. The feedback from our insurance carrier was positive. Policy 617, school volunteers, was prepared by our director of community education and also reviewed by the policy committee of the board. The recommended action is listed below. All right, thank you so much. So board members, the recommended action before you is to approve the listed policies, 527 student medication, 612 student travel, and policy 617 student volunteers as presented in your packet and by Dr. Johnson. Is there a motion to that effect? I so move, and I move that we waive the second reading and move the three policies forward for final approval. Okay, second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Are there, is there any discussion? I will just I will just note as a member of the policy committee that I appreciated um, the level of input that was brought into these policies. Both having um, John Wilson, who I think was recognized earlier tonight for as a nurse, um, we're making some significant changes to our student medication policy, um, and the district is is understanding that that will be a transition period. But I think it's a it's a wise move to get us in compliance with with things. Um, additionally, uh, Mr. Westrom, your feedback and your talk with the insurance carriers around our student travel, um, it really is. A team effort although it looks pretty fast on camera um, there is a lot of work and discussion that goes beyond behind the scenes so thank you to the administration for moving that forward all right uh, any other discussion it's been moved and seconded um, and so all in favor please say aye. aye aye opposed no abstentions motion carries we have some new policies thanks so much and Mr. Westrom, you've been busy. We have a number of business and finance yes, items and, tonight. Yes, and the board has been busy as well. Madam Chair and members of the school board, uh, this evening we have seven items before you related to finance and business matters. And uh, you'll be traveling between three school years. Uh, the first, the first <laughs> item is the wrap up of the financial reports uh, through the month of June 2019, or actually through the month of May. And uh, included in your packets are an expenditure report comparing current year expenditures um, to budget, looking at revenues compared to budget, um, our activity funds, and our investment summary report. You're probably aware that the school board has a finance committee that meets on a monthly basis, and we've looked through our financial reports in great detail, and nothing unusual is noted. Our student enrollment was strong throughout the year, all the way through the end of the school year, with a, a fairly large graduating class uh, from last or from two weeks ago already, and um, uh, we're anticipating a, a pretty robust kindergarten class coming in next fall as well. And we also know that uh, our newest school, Northwoods Elementary, is scheduled to open on time and on budget. So got a lot of different things going on. But uh, with the first item, if there are any uh, questions, I'd be happy to respond. All right. 
board colleagues, the financial statements are in your packet. Any questions or comments? We like on time and on budget. Thank Terrific, you, Mr. Terrific, yes. Mastrum. Okay, our next item is the preliminary adoption of a budget for the fiscal year that will start in a couple weeks on July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. You're probably aware that the school district actually relies on the uh, legislature to provide funding and the legislature did get their work done and they provided 2% improvement on the formula allowance, which is the primary driving uh, revenue factor for the school district in both years. So 2% on both years. And then we also received some additional um, funding related to an item called the special education cross subsidy. So you probably are aware that we started the budgeting process almost a year ago because you are going to be starting the budgeting process for 2021 in a few minutes as well. But um, uh, a couple of the highlights is we have adjusted um, a couple of the reserved fund balances in the 1819 school year. Long-term facility maintenance revenue, we've uh, budgeted $9.8 million in revenue and $9.8 million in expenditures. And then we also, as you are aware, plan to be doing a refresh of our elementary furniture. And we have ordered that furniture and expect about $1.2 million of that furniture to be received by June 30th. So within your current 1819 budget, we've asked for those two budget modifications. And then as far as next year, um, you'll see a specimen at each of your um, at each of your seats. Uh, it's a little larger um, uh, analysis of our fund balance, but you'll notice that our fund balance uh, stays right around that 10 percent or four to six weeks of operations. So uh, we've achieved our objectives. The board has worked uh, closely in providing direction to this to the administration. And uh, we followed the budget calendar and believe that uh, the budget that you see before you um, accurately reflects the goals and priorities of the school district. So um, one item that I did want to bring up is that uh, one component of the legislative um, increases in revenue is contingent upon a, the school or contingent upon the De Minnesota um, state of Minnesota meeting its budget. And so we did not budget about $450,000 worth of possible revenues that we'll find out sometime after October. So um, when the state actually determines if those resources are available, uh, we'll come back to the board and we'll ask the board to make a budget modification to receive those revenues. So with that, um, just another key message is we're anticipating over 300 new students in the district and over the next several years. We'll continue to see that enrollment growth and that actually helps to uh, provide some stability in our financial situation. You're probably aware that uh, 2%, while we appreciate that increase in legislative authority and legislative revenue, um, typically our inflationary increases are slightly higher than that. So with that, I would be happy to um, answer any questions if anybody has any in the, um, the motion is before you. All right, thank you. Yep. Before we get to questions, we will um, place the motion on the table. So um, as detailed by Mr. Westerman contained in your packet, the recommended action is to approve the preliminary, the preliminary budget for fiscal year 2019-2020 as detailed previously. Is there a motion to that effect? I so, so move. I'll second. And moved in second. And now it's a great time for discussion and questions and comments. It's going. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Westrom and the, the finance team and board members on the finance committee. One of the things that has interested me over the years is the fund balance, as you know, and I'm really happy to see that we continue to have a fund balance that's 10% or more. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Cohen. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Ms. Posey. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that the Finance Committee of the Board did meet with um, Mr. West Westrom um, last week, and we w had the opportunity to go over the budget kind of with a fine tooth comb and ask lots of questions, uh, which were, of course, answered in great detail so we can be sure that we know where all the pennies are going. Um, I commend you for putting together the budget, knowing that, you know, the legislature just finished their work, and it's always kind of 
during this biennium. It's always kind of a rush at the end to get everything done. So thank you for that. Um, the most important thing about this budget is it's balanced. And so we're not deficit spending at all. And it is kind of like you were explaining tonight. There's some things that get moved and there's some adjustments because of timings and different things like that. So, um, but we are assured that this is a balanced budget and we're not deficit spending at all. So um, it's wonderful that we can do that because as you explained, a 2% and 2% additional increase um, doesn't quite cover just our inflationary expenses. So you do a wonderful job making any adjustments that stay away from the classroom. And so I just wanted to, um, to appreciate that in public, that that's what we're trying to do as a district. So that's always important to remember. Um, uh, as far as the reserves go, we are keeping our eye on that and um, making sure that we have those reserves that are in policy parameters. So thank you for that. Um, I think that's about all of the points I wanted to reiterate. So thank you for your work. And yeah. did you have something else? Thank you. Um, yep, I did want to just mention too, um, uh, you probably recall that voters approved $70 million worth of construction projects in 2017. And so um, our operating funds are structurally balanced and we plan to expend those dollars over a five year period. I did make a note that Northwoods will be opening on time and under or within budget and uh, we still have three years worth of other projects that will occur and we typically have a 10 week period that actually started last Friday <laughs> and uh, uh, to do those construction projects so um, so if anybody uh, were to look at our total budget they would notice that we are um, expending about 20 million dollars of the 70 million dollars in the upcoming 12 month period which explains the the differing numbers with our revenue versus expenditures. Exactly. Right. So thank you for making those remarks. Right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the clarity of discussion and comments. We appreciate it. Any other questions or comments? No. Oh. All right. Well, board colleagues, all in favor of approving the recommended action, which is to approve the preliminary budget for fiscal year 2019 2020, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Extensions, motion carries. We have a start. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, our second item is to approve the revised 2018-2019 budget. And uh, you probably are aware that in our budget document, which is available on our website, and we're very transparent with our community, we always show three years worth of uh, budget and um, actual expenditures. So you'll see 2017-18 actual expenditures and revenues. You'll see 2018-19 budgeted items that have been revised for more current updates. Uh, we said our student enrollment was largely unchanged. However, some of our federal entitlements, um, interest earnings, and timing of some of our projects might be slightly different than they were a year ago. So the 2018-19 budget um, reflects those uh, adjustments that have been made. And the total revenue is $196,766,512. And the expenditures are $226,774,837. And with a high level of confidence, we can recommend that you approve that tonight. All right. Thank you. So board members, the um, action before you is to approve the revised budget for fiscal year 2018-2019. Is there a motion to that effect? I so move. A second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right. No, hearing none. And again, I think we talked in the last one about in detail about all that we're doing and why the numbers look the way that they do and such. So, all right. Great. Um, all in favor of approving the revised budget for fiscal year 2018 2019, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstention. Motion carries. Thank you, Board, Madam Chair. Our next item is where we begin the planning for the 2020-2021 school year. Every year, the school board can certify the population 
estimate of a community and then that will actually be used in the 2021 school year when we calculate the special or the community education revenue so pursuant to minnesota statute 275.14 a school district may submit an update of its resident population estimate to the state demographer for approval and we need to do that no later than july 15th and the board needs to take action prior to july 1st so there's some uh, documents that are included in there, but I would share with you that you're probably aware that three of our cities are growing rapidly. Corcoran, uh, Medina, Plymouth, well actually probably four of our cities in Maple Grove, um, up in the northwest corner of the school district. And so we're project projecting another 2,600 uh, families within the community. This is our total population. Um, that doesn't necessarily translate into 2,600 students, but it does uh, provide a, a pretty significant uh, enrollment increase within our district. And just a reminder that uh, at our work session on the 24th and then on July 8th at a school board meeting, we'll actually have a report from our demographer, Hazel Reinhardt, who will actually give us an update on projected enrollment for the next uh, several years. So with that, I would ask that you look at the recommended action and take action. All right, thank you so much. The recommended action is to approve the population estimate of 69,017 as of June 2019. Is there a motion to that effect? I so move. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Right. It is exciting. All right. Um, all right. And hearing no discussion, and we do look forward to hearing the population estimates and having our demographer come to see. I know as we just drive around, we see lots of houses being built and families and moving trucks. So, okay. Um, all in favor of the recommended action to approve the population estimate for um, of 69,017 as of June 2019, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you, board members and Madam Chair. The next item um, is a result, direct result of the legislature just uh, uh, finishing up their work. Under Minnesota Session Laws 2019, the first special session, Chapter 11, Article 1, Section 5 will require changes in the accounting for student activity funds and school boards must take charge of and control all student activities of the public schools in the district and that all money received or expended for extracurricular activities shall re be recorded in the same manner as other revenues and expenditures of the district. So due to this change, policy 713, student activities fund management shall be temporarily uh, suspended. This policy may be revised and reenacted at a future meeting, but uh, effective July 1st, uh, we will be again taking control of student activities. Basically, there is about a million dollars worth of activity that goes through these accounts, and it's largely run by our student governments and our student um, clubs under the advisors um, that are assigned and paid for by the district. So it should be largely transparent to our um, student activities and uh, shouldn't be additional cost to them. Um, we'll just have a greater oversight of those uh, revenues and expenditures. So. Um, once again, with a high level of confidence, we uh, have a recommended action before you. All right, thank you. So the recommended action is to adopt the, the resolution to move extracurricular activities under board control um, and um, to furthermore abol or abolish the school board policy 713, which is the student activities and fund management policy. Is there a motion to that effect? I so move. And Second. And do, will the maker in the second ask to waive the reading of the resolution? Yes. yes. Uh, I so move and move that we waive the reading. Okay. Thanks so much. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Eric. Uh, I just want to say good luck with the process. I know it's going to be a, a big task to take on for the finance team, uh, but I'm very excited about the process. We've discussed this over the last few years, and I, I think this will be a nice oversight for the district. So. Thank you, and, and good luck with the, the change. Yes, thank you. Any other discussion? 
I will underscore that this is a this is a perfect example, as you mentioned, of how acts at the legislature, as we talk on one hand about getting the finance, the funding, and being able to do things, also sometimes work to change our processes. And so, for our viewing audience too, um, it, it will be a transition for all of us. It's in the best interest of the district, and we're excited about it. And thank you to the business and finance team for your work in seeing this through. And thank you to our public and our students and our activities for working with us to move this forward. All right, it's a roll call vote. Yes, Linda Cohen. Yes. Sarah Johansson. Yes. Benita Lucky. Absent. Cheryl Polzine, yes. Eric Brown. Yes. Andrea Keene. Yes. And Chris McCullough is absent. Thank you. And again, I didn't say this before, but that roll call vote just approved the recommended action to adopt the resolution to move extra corrective duties under board control and abolish policy 713. Yes, thank you, uh, school board members and Madam Chair. Our next item is a master lease purchase agreement with Apple Incorporated. Wyzetta Public Schools desires to enter into a master lease purchase agreement with Apple for the purpose of acquiring and financing 5,200 iPads. You recall that our iPads are on a three-year cycle. Um, we um, typically utilize leasing because we can match the payments of the uh, lease payments with the, uh, the acquisition and financing of the iPads. You're probably aware that our voters have approved a technology levy that will actually make those payments. The district received four responses and the terms um, were very favorable and Apple actually uh, was the lowest of the four responses that we received. So without going into a lot of detail, I know that this has been a routine that we've done on an on a annual basis. The recommended action is before you to approve the, this agreement. All right, thank you, Mr. Westrom. The recommended action, board colleagues, is to approve the master lease purchase agreement with Apple Incorporated and to authorize the executive director of finance and business services to execute and deliver the agreement. Is there a motion to that effect? I so move. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I don't think so. All right. Um, hearing none, uh, all in favor of approving the recommended action to approve the master lease purchase agreement with Apple, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstention. Motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. Our last item is the school board candidate filing. Uh, resolution. So the general election shall be held on Tuesday, November 5th, 2019. At that election, four members of the school board uh, will be elected to the school board for terms of four years each. As set by Minnesota statute, the period for filing affidavits of candidacy for the school board election begins on July 30th, 2019 and closes on August 13th, 2019. So the recommended action is before you. All right, thank you so much. Board colleagues, the recommended action is to adopt the resolution establishing the date for filing affidavits of candidacy for the November 2019 school board election as presented and detailed in the comments. Is there a motion to that effect? I so move and I move that we waive the reading. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? In case anyone is watching us at home and is curious about this, you should also be watching district publications. There will probably be a couple of school board information sessions as well for anyone who is interested in candidacy. So watch your email inboxes or call the district administration office to find those dates if you are interested. All right, it's a resolution. And so there will be a roll call vote on behalf of the recommended action to adopt the resolution establishing the date for filing affidavits of candidacy for the November 2019 school board election. All right, Andrea Keene. Yes. Benita Lucky, absent. Chris McCullough, absent. Cheryl Polzine, yes. Eric Brown. Yes. Linda Cohen. Yes. And Chair Johansson. Yes. All right, thanks so much. We are looking ahead. November seems very far away. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Westrom, and thank you to the business and finance team that worked alongside of you. Um, the next item on our agenda are our board reports. Does anyone have a board report? I do have a board report. Um, and it is related to uh, the West Metro Education Program, or as everyone knows, that is WEMAP. And so um, 
uh, in previous reports or in previous board reports at both board meetings and work sessions, I have updated the board and the public regarding the decision of the Joint Powers Board that governs the WEMAP organization to um, dissolve the organization. And in fact, the dissolution process has been in place since um, April of 2018. Um, at the final Joint Powers Board meeting was held just last Monday, June 4th, 2019. And I would like to read the brief resolution that was passed by a unanimous roll call vote. Let me see if I have it now. Okay, the resolution states, um, whereas on April 26, 2018, the WEMAP Joint Powers Board approved a resolution which would, which would dissolve WEMAP effective June 30, 2018. And whereas that same resolution provided that the WEMAP Board shall continue in effect beyond June 30, 2018 to wrap up the affairs of WEMAP, including paying the final bills, ensuring that the final audit is conducted, and ensuring the disposition of all property and records. And whereas on June 4, 2019, all actions have been completed and all known obligations have been satisfied for dissolution. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the winding down of WEMAP's affairs is declared ended, and be it further resolved that the authority granted by the resolution approved on April 26, 2018 for the WEMAP Joint Powers Board to continue meeting and taking action during the wind down of WEMAP is hereby ended and withdrawn, effective with the adjournment of the WEMAP Joint Powers Board special meeting on June 4, 2019. So um, as I stated before, that resolution was approved by um, a unanimous vote. Um, there were uh, remaining assigned, um, all of the documents and records went to the Historical Society. The WeMap website remains um, out in cyberspace in perpetuity. So um, anyone can go back to that website um, if they want to have more specific directions or if they're fitting, forgetting about how to access records. Um, anyone that's looking for um, any of their educational records as a student of WEMAP should go to their district, their home district or their district of residence. And so I think all of the ways that the documents came here and, and they were such distributed to other places. Um, the remaining, there were assets then once all the bills were paid and the leases were done um, of both an assigned and an unassigned fund balance. And um, those um, assets were divided among the remaining six member districts and I think the um, checks were authorized last week, and so the goal would be to have them hitting school district mailboxes by June 15th. And so um, so that will be coming. Um, as the WEMAP representative for the last three years, um, I just would like to um, acknowledge the Joint Powers Board of um, really committed members, um, board members from our neighboring districts that worked really diligently to wind it down. I want to acknowledge my board support and Dr. Anderson and our district for the work that we have done. Um, it, it was a it was a somber ending to an organization, um, but I think that everyone left knowing that the work of Reimagine Minnesota and the work that we were doing in each of our member districts would really um, stay true to th the vision and the charge of the WEMAP organization, um, and we would be doing it just in, in different ways this time. So that is, um, that is the conclusion of the West Metro Education Program. Okay. Any other board reports? Any audience who would like to address the school board? <laughs> Not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 The Wayzata Public Schools Board of Education regular meeting for Monday, June 10th, 2019 is adjourned.